Yo, what is going on everybody? It's your boy Scotty and I am back. It is Friday and as you can see, I'm holding something right now and it is a blue snowball microphone. So if I do sound a little bit different, that is why. Hopefully I do sound a bit more clearer. If I do sound a little bit different and it's not the good way, uh, it's because I haven't got the pop filter on it yet and I haven't got the stand for it. So the, hopefully the next video it comes, it was meant to come hopefully by today, which is Friday the 24th of July. So by saying that, we have had a week of football back in the Ailey. We have had five games played. I'll quickly just go over the results. I'll go over a bit more in depth in a minute. Uh, so we've got Sydney FC beating Wellington Phoenix 3-1 in the first game, which was played at Natstrada Jubilee Stadium. Uh, we've also got Perth Glory played on Saturday, beat the Mariners 1-0. Uh, we lost, unfortunately, to Adelaide United 1-0, Brisbane Raw lost 1-0 to Adelaide. I'll get more into detail with that one there. That'll be the main focus of this video. Uh, we've got Newcastle Jets beat Sydney FC 2-1, which is a brilliant result for them. And either Jets back, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, and also we've got Wellington Phoenix that beat Perth Glory 2-1 on Wednesday night. So that was a very good game as well. So we'll get we'll get into a, a bit of a wrap-up over the weekend. So we sort of, we've seen a lot of teams coming back Uh they look a little bit rusty to start off the game. They sort of build into the game and then they get a few more goals. If, if you have a look at the game, there's only been two games where there's only been one goal scored or the rest have got like three to four goals scored. So it it, it, it depends on really the way the team plays. Uh, the way that the Brisbane Raw game was played, uh, early goal happened from Adelaide United and then there was chances either ran. Both teams looked a bit rusty. We I think the Brisbane Raw played pretty well on the park uh, at moments. They also had their patches where they weren't the best. Adelaide United counter attacked very well and got us in behind us a few times there. Uh, Paul Azo definitely was a brilliant keeper for them and kept them in the game. Definitely was the man of the match of the before, uh, of the round and of that game, unfortunately. For us, he kept us out a few a few too many times, but we'll have a look at the ladder. I'll pop it up in the screen just over here. Hopefully, if I don't pop it up in the screen, I haven't actually edited it because I couldn't get it from my phone, but I'll pop it up here. So we have Sydney FC sitting top of the ladder. They haven't actually reached the Premier's play yet um, because of the fact that they actually lost to Newcastle. They would have done it there if they, I think, even got a point out of Newcastle. Uh, but Newcastle Jets actually won that game in the last minute with the Costa Petrados goal from outside the box, which uh, made Sydney wait a little bit longer. But uh, in saying that, we've got Melbourne City sitting second, haven't played a game yet since they've been back, but they'll be back this weekend, uh, I believe anyway. Uh, Wellington Phoenix third, Brisbane Royal fourth for now, and Perth Glory City fifth, Adelaide United sixth. And obviously Western United haven't played a game yet, seventh. Newcastle Jets are climbing at eighth. Western Sydney haven't played their game yet, I don't believe. So then ninth, the Melbourne Victory tenth, and then Central Coast Mariners eleventh. So if we have a look at it, the Brisbane Raw basically have, pay, uh, have played one more game than Perth Glory and are sitting one point ahead of them. I do think that we probably will drop down to maybe fifth. I don't think we'll drop out of the six. If we can hold top four, that'd be absolutely brilliant. But I'll quickly just get into a bit of the stats for the Raw game. So we'll, we'll talk about the uh, the team list here. I'll pop that up on the screen just over here as well. It's not in position order, it's just basically how it is written on here. You can sort of tell the positions actually from here. Uh, it's just not in formation order. So we played our, our general 3-5-2 or 3-4-1-1, I guess if you want to call it our 3-4-2, I don't know. But we played three at the back. Uh, so we played Jamie Allen goal with uh, Corey Brown left wing back with Gillespie, Aldridge and Neville at centre back. And right wing back, we had Jack uh, Jack Hingott. So a fairly standard uh, full, uh, formation for our fullbacks there and the uh, personnel as well. We did start with Matthew Redanson in the midfield, which did come off after the 58th minute. I thought he did the simple things well. Uh, a few times he turned the ball over, probably a few too many times that he probably shouldn't have. But in saying that, he did do his job well. He is a holding midfielder, so he he did his job well when he came. Uh, he played the game. Uh, we had Jay O'Shea playing a little bit deeper. I think I feel like if we want to get the base out of him, we've got to play more forward. But it's just hard when we have McDonald and in many of those positions as well. You sort of have to have one playing further back. But in saying that, Jay O'Shea probably was our best player, or one of the best anyway. Uh, with uh, we had Brad Inman, like I said, uh, Scott McDonald played I think in that ten role with Brad Inman, and we had uh, Dylan Wenzel Halls at top. Uh, we did see four substitutions in the game. Courtney Perkins came on for Glasgow in the seventy fourth minute. I think that was due to a hamstring injury for Glasgow, so we haven't heard the extent yet. So hopefully he's all right. Uh, we also saw Mercer Maradovich and Amadi Holloway came on as a double say sub at the end of the game in the eighty fourth minute for Dylan Wenzel Halls and Brad Inman. I do believe Bradman was pretty invisible in the game. I think the Adelaide team marked him out fairly well. But someone that I was very impressed with was Danny Kim. He actually got a, a chance. I went down to the game in Gold Coast and he got Danny Kim. He's one of our own. He got a chance for himself. So that would have boosted his confidence straight away there. But I thought he played very well. Uh, did the, really good, uh, the little things really well. He uh, Very tidy on the ball. Very good footwork. Uh, moved the ball around well around the pitch. Uh, did lose possession a few times there, but he won't learn for that. He did have a very good performance. He was always looking forward, and I think the fact that Warren Moon has worked under him before, uh, he's worked under Warren Moon, sorry, before, he's gonna, Warren's going to be able to get the best out of him there. So 
we did unfortunately uh, go down 1 0 to Adelaide United. We had a six minute goal for Christian Opset. The ball basically got picking down the right hand side, crossed in real early, and it landed. I think it was between Aldred and uh, Gillespie, I think it was. It fell, fell to him, and we just weren't switched on, I guess, at the start. We played pretty well after that for patches. Uh, we did uh, look a little bit um, on the back foot when Adelaide had a lot of pace up front, pinging the balls over the top and uh, counter attacking, but in saying that, we did play. Not a bad game of football. If we have a look at the stats quickly, actually. Oh, actually, I can find the formation thing down here. I just scrolled down. So that thing will be... Uh, I'll actually put the uh, formation up on the screen here on how we actually played. It basically looks like we had, yeah, the 3-5-2. So they put McDonald and Neville uh, Wenzel Halls up top. So we had uh, Nicola Miller using this down the left and Ben Hanna on down the right, smashing our wings and over the top of our three balls down there. Just kept smashing us with um, those three balls down our full backs. Something I would like to say... Actually, our fullbacks played a lot higher this time. Uh, there was times where Jack Inger was actually playing up next to Scott McDonald, and he's sort of like, wait, what are you doing up here? Should I pass you the ball? So I think that that is good. We did. Uh, we aren't as fluid in the attack as some other teams where we can hit on the counter-attack because our fullbacks generally are a bit further back. But uh, we did see um, our fullbacks get higher and wider uh, in this game here, which is, might be something that we see in the future. Uh, if we have a look at the quick, quickly look at the stats, uh, we did play fairly well. Um, if we have a look, where is the uh, shots? Uh, let me find it. If we have a look at the stats, we had, actually had more of the ball. We had 57% of the ball. And in saying that, we uh, didn't do a lot with it. We didn't score a goal, but in saying that, we had eight corners to six. And we actually had, where is that shot at? Um, we did see it before. We had, we had 23 shots compared to Adelaide United's 10. So I think... The boys just needed to get, they only had eight shots on target, which is pretty bad when you see that uh, we couldn't get one goal in. But in saying that, there was good signs for the rule, so hopefully we can see something better in the next game. We do play against Melbourne Victory. The team hasn't come out yet for who we're actually playing in that one. But uh, I'll quickly just chat about some of the other teams there. Newcastle Jets actually look like they could be back. They beat Sydney FC 2-1. Uh, Whether it was just an off day for Sydney FC or not, I'm not sure. But in saying that, uh, Adelaide United impressed me. Newcastle Jets impressed me. Wellington look like contenders. They looked really well in their first game against Sydney. Sydney was just a little bit better than them and then scored two goals right at the end. And also, uh, they actually beat Perth fairly convincingly. Perth did get a one-off goal. Dane England's been looking really good since he's been back. He's got two crazy goals. One in the uh, Wellington game and one against, uh, who was it, Central Coast Mariners. Mariners haven't looked a lot uh, very good at all. But in saying that, uh, I, th I think a lot of the com competitions are actually quite a lot tighter since uh, the round started. We've only seen five games, so we can't really talk too much on it but um we are we do play melbourne victory on the wednesday so fingers crossed for the raw boys that we do get a victory there i think uh robbie cruz is out for the rest of the season which is unfortunate so uh, uh well, we might be versing a melbourne victory team that is a little bit weaker so we'll wait and see to see how that goes but um i i, I really enjoyed the way that raw play and hopefully we do see a few more performances where we do get the w but in saying that hope you enjoyed the video remember to comment like subscribe and i'm out peace Close doors, I'm a fool for your love